And we're back to continue our prospect rankings for the 2022 NFL Draft. And we're going to continue with the Hog Mollies offensive interior. But I'm going to be releasing these all throughout the week. So be sure to check out that. I got a mock draft I put out earlier. I was kind of testing with different possibilities and scenarios. But what's crack -a It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, a beautiful football discourse. A bay B. This is my top 10. If you want to see my full prospect rankings, go ahead. Check out the Patreon link in the description along with some other links if you're interested in some merch and whatnot let's go ahead and get into it lasetius smith coming here at number 10 let me know if i got his name right if i didn't just let me know how to pronounce it but coming here at number 10 he had a relatively quiet senior bowl i thought he shined pretty well in the run blocking drills uh he didn't end up participating in the game but he's got good tape the dude was probably one of the biggest movers for a lot of people coming into the season He's a, just a smooth mover, uh, very violent and powerful hands. I like that. <laughs> Woo, bless me, bless me. And in the run game, I love this dude just keeps churning and churning his feet. They just keep driving. I like that. I like this guy plays with a good nastiness. Plays with a nice low center of gravity, and he's good at shrinking his uh, strike zone well. It's hard to get into his chest, but he had multiple holding calls this season. See, the guy, he's a striker, man. He's got a lot of pop behind those hands, but it, he whiffs. He whiffs at the point of attack occasionally, which leads to those holding calls where guys will get by him, and he'll go and you know reach. You know what a holding call is. But he does need to improve his pass blocking technique. But, in, I mean, the dude's got length. He's got uh, good grip strength. That's something I think will come in time. That's why I got him as a late day two prospect. Um, I, uh, the guy I have at 11, he's also a late, two, late day two prospect. Like, So I got 11 of these guys be like that I have like – draftable grades on day one and day two like this interior class because for me i think it kind of like it kind of falls off on day three but like i it's a lot deeper than i think people give a credit for i actually really like this offensive interior class let's continue with ed ingram out of ls uh he took some snaps under center this uh this the past week at the senior bowl and I thought it was all right. He struggled at guard during the game. Overall, it was a pretty strong week, though, for him during drills and whatnot. Uh, he played significant time there at right guard and left guard. He isn't your typical LSU lineman, though. Typically, we're used to these guys being these phone booth um, type defenders. Stupid strong, stupid powerful. Not at all that uh, elegant or quick or agile i don't know why i went with elegant why the heck would i have said that but no he's kind of the opposite of that because the dude is he's actually pretty quick he's got plus movement skills uh i think for a guy that's in his like what he's a fifth year you expect him to be a bit more tech uh, technically sound especially as a pass protector but is what it is for the most part he's been a he's been uh solid he's been a stalwart stalwart is that how you say that word y'all know me i can't pronounce words worth crap uh in pass protection in the sec which is a big plus was one game really like bad game was against mississippi state if you want to go check that out i like checking out their worst games um after i check out their best games kind of gives you the whole like it gives it gives you a full the full spectrum like uh oh ooh. uh but he allowed 11 pressures and two sacks this season on 468 pass rushing or pass blocking snaps he plays with good nastiness though that mentality is the mentality of an lsu lineman however he does need to add some lower body strength there are times um he just gets stood up by defenders instead of being able to drive them out of the way so add in lower body strength will be key and i think it'll also help him be a better pass blocker be able to set up a better anchor 
but good job ed ingram i know he people been throwing him in the uh comment section and i've kind of been like off and on he's been outside my top 10 for a long while but yeah no good good senior bowl practices i decided to move him up here at nine and then marquise hayes out of oklahoma listen 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 i'm typically not a phone booth defender type of guy that's just not who i am those just aren't the guys that i fall in love with but i kind of fell in love with hayes because this guy just buries dude dudes oh my goodness he's got like 35 inch arms and he just likes to bury guys in the run game he's extremely strong just loves to impose his will onto the defense for a taller lineman he does he doesn't get out leveraged much but you kind of we'll talk about his pass uh pass blocking snaps like i i guess we could talk about it now like in when he goes into uh when he becomes a when he's pass blocking the longer the quarterback holds on to the ball that's when you see him when he gets starts starts get uh given up or seeding a little bit of ground he does does tend to get a bit higher pad level and that's where he starts to get out leveraged but he isn't the most bendy guy he is a bit slow out of his stance and at the point of attack uh there he does have a few holding calls um and i like to, I, I probably bring that up to really say again when it comes to being a phone booth defender you're not going to be the most fleet of foot guy and he against twitchier guys on the interior that's where he kind of lost and he has that lane he ends up trying to arm bar guys it's just it's just what happens yeah uh, what how many did I, did I list how many penalties he had i don't think i did no 18 he has 18 as a starter there we go uh he has probably some of the most active hands he uses his hands extremely well and he hits like a brick like legit like a brick through a wall and i'm gonna use that comparison again for the next guy um He's actually pretty decent at driving up field, get into the second level. But yeah, playing uh him playing a bit lower is it still a bit of work in progress. Thought he did a better job at that at the senior bowl. Still really like this cat as a prospect, and I have for quite a bit now. And then Sean Ryan coming here at number seven. He played left tackle there at UCLA, but he does have shorter arm or at least anticipating where we're anticipating him to measure out with shorter arms than desirable there at the tackle position. So that's why a lot of people are listing him on the interior. But he has a track and field background. I think he did the shot put. And it legit, it shows with his hands. He like He's got a lot of pop in his hands. It's like throwing a brick through a window. He actually has some good, um, really good tape. Uh, he faced Kayvon Thibodeau obviously twice, but in 2020, he only allowed one pressure on 25 pass rushing snaps uh, against Drake Jackson, who is probably one of the most explosive and lengthy edge rushers in this class. He actually did a pretty solid job too, or pretty solid job against uh, being able to mirror uh, him there on the outside. Uh, in the second matchup with KT, I found it weird. UCLA decided to kind of like scheme um ryan kind of away from kt uh whether that was with um uh moving him along the line like on running plays like having him kind of like pull over or having uh greg dolchich who is obviously known to be one of the better blocking titans in this class that's a joke that's a joke but uh having him man kt up one-on-one -on -one, which that was just devastating unfortunately there are some times where he struggles with his anchor but he does a good job of resetting his anchor so that's good you like to see that you like to see that recovery if you lose right away you like to see how you recover you talk about that all the time with corners but we should kind of talk about that also with offensive linemen solid enough run blocker however his production the last two seasons have been a huge step up from what it was his freshman season uh length obviously going to be questioned that's why a lot of people view him as a guard but yeah dude no I, I like this cat a bit he can be a bit of a lunger once he gets to the second level or if he's pulling over 
where that just kind of takes you out of the play. Even if you even if you take one guy out, it takes you out of the play downfield. You know, Lundgren, it's it's not desirable. But I like Sean Ryan quite a bit. Got him as a mid day two prospect at number six. Darion Kennard out of Kentucky. Uh, listen, so uh, first off, inexperienced at guard. Typically, that's not a huge thing. It's like, okay, if you don't think they can play tackle, you're probably going to move them to guard. They should find success there. It was just on day two and three of the Senior Bowl where they actually moved him to guard quite a bit, and he struggled. He struggled quite a bit. He even struggled in the game. So that's why I put inexperienced at guard. Uh, it, it just doesn't look like the play would be high-end just yet if you start him right away. But kind of is what it is now likely gonna be a guard in the nfl he doesn't he's doesn't use his hands well in pass protection um he's not i don't think quick enough to really mirror like the quicker edge rushers that are on the outside but he played in a heavy uh inside zone running game there for kentucky uh matter of fact uh run blocking probably one of the best run blocking tackles last season for Kentucky uh, he's a big boy loves to bury defenders love that mindset um, he's an enforcer who's just very very powerful frame long frame uh, strong hands can be overwhelming however in pass protection again he kind of gets a bit wide with his hands gonna lead to a lot of holding calls in the NFL if you keep him out there at tackle uh, great length uh kind of talked about that but yeah foot speed not ideal but you love the physicality you love the raw power uh you love what his hands are capable of even if they do need to get better in pass protection again you can kind of hide that at guard a little bit but still a bit of a concern you see the huge upside with this cat but it's just not there quite yet and then number five jim uh jamari sawyer out of georgia uh I wasn't initially that high off this cat because let me tell you, he was playing like I love I love that this guy has played a variety of different positions for Georgia, but he settled in at left tackle this season. And he wasn't really used as like a traditional left tackle. Like Georgia never really left him on an island. He either had a tight end or two tight ends playing next to him so he's basically playing like a guard at the tackle position but the guy is incredibly strong he has heavy hands really loves to impose the will he can really bend back a uh bend back defenders coming in however he does get he does get bent at the waist sometimes um sometimes that waist or that um weight distribution isn't ideal and you'll see him seed ground in that he's uh, needs to do a better job of consistently kind of like sitting in his stance especially in pass protection which georgia they were a run heavy offense doesn't surprise me that's something he needs to work on though he looked good at the senior bowl moving to guard i really like that now again kind of a phone booth type of blocker the foot speed not adequate um or i don't want to say not adequate but it's not it's not high end it's not great it, laterally he's still going to be kind of guy that's like eh, he's the guy that you want to kind of move upfield rather than pulling over and sometimes he will play ahead of himself not necessarily a lunger but uh that's where you'll see some of the contact uh balance kind of like go a wall because he's playing in front of his knees in front of his toes and it'll make it, he'll get toroed like a bull if you know what i am saying though but i like the frame i like the length maybe a limited athlete but 34 inch arms gave guys problems all week at the senior bowl uh i like the move to guard i think he's going to be one of the higher uh higher prospects for um some teams when it comes to the second round it wouldn't surprise me if he snuck into the second round at number four, Dylan Parham out of Memphis. I was shocked when he came to the Senior Bowl because he was listed at like 6'2", 6'3", 285. And then he comes in 6'2", 3'13". What? 
That's freaking incredible. I love it. I love it. He's he's actually played quite a bit all around the uh, offensive line for Memphis, but he had he is a rare athlete for an interior prospect. Uh, great flexibility and can really get out of the play. He's going to be very valuable in a very zone heavy offense. Like dude's going to be a very valuable. Uh, the guy I love, I love guys that just keep their feet moving and they just keep on churning. His technique, yeah, it's a bit everywhere, but the movement skills are rare. Uh, I just like that. His play strength will be a concern. His physicality, uh, that mentality will be a concern. His anchor, I think, was more of a concern coming into the Senior Bowl than it was after. Uh, especially in the game, you saw him just hold up very well against a lot of great talent. I listed level of competition here, but I think he kind of like quelled those rumors or those concerns by playing against a lot of high-end prospects there at the Senior Bowl. Uh, Parham ends, ended up being probably one of my biggest movers. Initially, I think I had a fifth-round grade. Then he came in, weighed, and measured it at what he did, and I was like, what the heck? Okay, let's see if this was like bad weight added or Memphis scales are broken. And you know what? It looked good during the week. That's why I got him here at number four. And then at number three, Tyler Smith out of Tulsa. I think I'm going to be a lot higher on Tyler Smith than probably um, the NFL. I'm just going to say that. Uh, just because he's he's a redshirt sophomore, unable to get a senior bowl. If he would have waited a year, he would have been a, uh, eligible for the senior bowl. So we're not going to see him until... Uh, the combine, which I'm not even sure he got an invite to. I imagine he did. But 6'6", 332, raw power. And he's got actually really good, like really quick feet for a dude his size. And I love that this guy, again, I'm a freaking sucker for guys that just keep churning and keep driving in the run game. Last two seasons, he's only allowed 17 pressures and two sacks. And that's over on over 800 passing snaps there at left tackle but again probably moving to the inside at his size i mean you're probably going to the interior uh he has committed 16 penalties throughout his career and a lot of that has to do with well he's just not an athlete that can hang out there at tackle um while he's got quick feet he does have like he he does have a bit his hips are a bit stiff he doesn't open up his hips um he opens up his hips pretty late. By that time, the pass rusher already by him. He takes bad angles in pass protection. Again, being on the outside, I imagine a lot of this is going to look a lot better at guard. But it led to a lot of penalties. I think it was 16 in 2021 20, alone. So, yeah, there is that. But the raw power, a lot of lower body strength. Again, never stop churning. Never stop. I love it. Uh, I think he's going to probably end up being one of the best run blocking uh, prospects in this class. I'm a huge fan of his game. I bet you he sneaks. I bet you, unless he somehow sets the combine on fire, if he's invited. Again, I haven't looked yet. Uh, I'm still trying to put together all my stuff from uh, the Senior Bowl, Shrine Bowl, NFL PA Bowl. But I, I, it, it wouldn't surprise me if he goes in like the fourth, fifth round. But I like this cat a lot. I would take him in the second round in a heartbeat. And then number two, Zion Johnson. First round grade. An amazing, amazing senior bowl. Not exactly a perfect senior bowl. He was learning center on the fly. You're probably not going to play him at center anyway. But he's going to be a great guard prospect. Pro ready. NFL made. Start tomorrow type of guy he was a transfer from davidson in 2019 uh started playing left tackle uh the past like the first two seasons then he moved to left guard and just looked great man he's a good athlete good athlete uh they're playing on the outside um glad that they moved him into guard uh he moves pretty good in space uh, shows good balance, gets to the second level relatively easy. His lower body strength is very impressive. Dude's got tree trunk thighs. I'm telling you, traffic jam booty. This guy's lower half is mwah, that boy thick, and you like to see that. Only real hiccup 
uh, came in the opener in 20, 2020. And that's when he was playing left tackle. And that's when they had guys like um, uh, Chris Rumpf. And I forgot who the other cat was. They had a really good duo at edge there. Uh, probably blitz recognition, something he needs to work on. Um, and just with stunts, that he got caught off guard in that Duke game. You kind of kind of saw that. Uh, I listed him as an above average athlete. Like while he he's like good in a lot of areas. Um, like I wouldn't say he has like elite burst or elite get off. Uh, I wouldn't say he's like an elite athlete for the position, but he's an above average. And again, we're kind of nitpicking here. Uh, trying to fill out that weaknesses uh, column there. But dude, dude's a great prospect. I'm glad that he started getting the hype he did. I was pretty high on him initially. And uh, yeah, I mean, not like first round high on him. But to be fair, before the Senior Bowl, I put out a mock where I threw him in the first round. And then sure enough, first round prospect. And then y'all should already know, I love me Tyler Linderbaum. He's a top 10 prospect to me. Um everything he does he does fast whether it's how he uses his hands his feet the guy is just good he was originally recruited to play defensive line and you would imagine that's where he would have stayed but he converted to offensive line in 2019 and the dude has just been probably the best center in the country since like no one can really hold a candle to him as an athlete on the offensive line in this class I just, I just, I just, I uh, love it. Uh, I hope he get he plays in like an outside zone blocking scheme because you want this guy on the move. He's only allowed two sacks and eighteen pressures through three seasons. Uh, teams will not like that he's sub three hundred. We'll see how he measures out at the combine. Uh, because of that probably a center only prospect, and I say maybe, perhaps we'll see how he measures out. Really weighs out. Uh, hand placement could be a bit more consistent. Um, I like to see him use his hands a bit more independently. Uh, but he's really good at when he needs to use them in unison. Pretty good at that. But I love this dude. As a, I love this dude. Strong hands, wrestling background. Go look up. It's on Twitter of him just manhandling Tristan Wirfs uh, in a wrestling match. It is a thing of a beauty. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Go ahead, do that YouTube thing. It's always much appreciated, much obliged. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.